Welcome back to 3T everybody, I'm Ben Merck aka The Manic Merck and today we're going to talk tips, tricks and tactics for Sushi Go. Now before we jump into it, I, if you would take the time, make sure you subscribe to the channel in order to get your gamey, geeky, sporty goodness. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and grab our chopsticks and get down to business. First thing to keep your eye on during this and any card drafting game is the cards that are being passed to you. And while that might sound completely obvious and applicable to every single game you're ever going to play, it's especially important with card drafting games. The reason for that is because some of those cards that you're passing are going to make their way back to you. An example, if a hand has multiple sashimi or tempura cards, you're going to know that there's a good chance that you could get one of those cards back and score points with it. Pro tip to remember. Every hand that you see is revealing more information about the cards available during that round of play. Dose. Don't get caught drafting for the same thing as the person passing you cards if you can avoid it. Especially something difficult like sashimi which requires three cards. Why you ask? Well, because the only way you're ever going to get that card is if it's passed to you from them. And that's only going to happen if they aren't paying attention or there are multiple cards in the hand. C. Let's talk about points and picks. The single highest card value in the game is Squid Nigiri with three points, making it a good choice almost every single time. It's also part of the highest two card combo of a Wasabi plus a Squid Nigiri for a massive nine points. Just remember that the second highest two card combo is a Wasabi plus a Salmon Nigiri for a really respectable six points. Never get into a drawn out Maki battle. Six points for winning is absolutely awesome, but if it costs you four or five cards in order to win, that's a lot of wasted points, especially if you slip into second place. Trust me, I know all too well from experience, it is far better to give up the Maki battle in order to win the Sushi War. Dumplings can be a great investment, as the more you have, the more they go up in value, up to a legendary 15 points, if you can pull off drafting all five of them. I'll be honest, I don't see people draft all five of them very often, but when they do it's impressive and they usually win the round. Tempura is often a safe bet, as you only need two cards for a respectable uh, five points. That is if everyone else at the table isn't thinking the same thing. Sashimi is the hardest set to complete, yet somehow I always end up finding myself tempted into trying for it. It's three cards for a sizable ten points. Oftentimes you have to hope that no one else is drafting for it, someone else is kindly and passes it to you, or that the entire table remains oblivious to your intentions. That leaves dessert. This is hit or miss for me. It's all about scoring the most points for your cards over the course of the game. If it costs you four to five pudding in order to score six points, that's a pretty bad investment. Now don't get me wrong, I try never to be in last place because losing six points can lose you the game. But I personally try to stay in the middle of the pack and draft other cards in order to make up the point difference. Roman numeral four. Chopsticks. When to pick them and when to pass them. My personal preference is that if chopsticks are in my opening hand, I take them, because that gives me the best option at getting two great cards from a future hand. But by the middle of the round, you're basically picking over leftovers, so, you know, who needs them? To be fair though, I will say I have seen mid-round chopsticks work out before, but that's going to be a tactic you have to try at your own risk. Viking emoji. Viking emoji? Oh no. That means he's coming! And now for the things he wouldn't tell you. Always remember that board games are made for winning. In battle it is the vicious that are victorious. As you survey the field of play, seek opportunities to deny your opponent's precious victory points. If you can choose between your second beauty dumpling for two points, or you can take a sashimi worth 10 points to your fiercest competitor, that is a card well spent. Just be judicious with this approach, as drafting useless cards will minimize your maximum points. Uh, only the brave and the fierce, but also the balanced, can go on to conquer their foes, vanquish them, and claim VICTORY! That's enough AM. <sighs> Jeez, he's pushy. Well, in conclusion, the more you play, the better you'll be at seeing all the options on the table. When in doubt or feeling overwhelmed, just focus on yourself, and don't really worry about what the rest of the players are doing. 
Remember that the first game is always the worst game, and hopefully this video helps bridge the gap for you from beginner to contender. Now go play and win more games! <laughs> Mm-hmm.